Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you very much indeed for joining me and welcome to this general course information session. My name is Will Breer Hall. I'm LSE's student recruitment and study abroad manager. One of my responsibilities is to run our study abroad program, the general course. So I'm going to tell you over the next few minutes a little bit about the school, about LSE, who we are, what we are, what we offer, what we don't offer. But perhaps most importantly, I'm going to tell you about study abroad at LSE. And really importantly, what are we looking for in a competitive and hopefully successful applicant to the school? Just a couple of housekeeping announcements before I, I delve into all of that. I am going to be recording today's session so you can relive these moments uh, in the future. But do please, if you don't mind, keep your cameras and your microphones off throughout the session. Uh, it makes things just a, a little bit simpler. And there'll be plenty of opportunity at the end for you to ask me any questions that you might have. So I'll, I'll take questions at the end. But during the presentation, cameras and microphones off if you don't mind. Now I do, before we get started, I do know, I'm very well aware that virtual sessions like this, whilst serving a purpose, are often far from stimulating, especially when they're delivered by me. So I will be as swift as I possibly can, as brief as is possible, while still conveying uh, the key information, the most important facts you need. Do please, of course, look at the website as well. After you've listened to this presentation, if you are still interested in studying at LSE, have a look at the website, really comprehensive, lots of material there that supplements what I'm about to tell you. Having said all of that, let's now uh, get started and uh, begin with something very basic, very introductory, what is LSE? Well, LSE is of course the London School of Economics and political science. The and political science is very important. Uh, we do teach economics. It would be curious if we didn't teach economics, but it isn't the majority of what we deliver. Uh, the vast majority, 70% of what LSE teaches is essay-based qualitative social science. Everything that LSE teaches can be said to be a social science. We are a dedicated social science institution. So you won't find uh, at LSE any natural sciences. Uh, there are no medical degrees, no veterinary science, nothing like that, purely social science. But having said that, quite a wide range of social sciences. If you have a look at this particular slide, you will see arranged there on the screen for you, all of the fields within which we teach at the undergraduate level. Now, if you come to study at LSE, you'll be joining our undergraduate cohort. So these are the subject areas within which you can take courses as a general course student at the school. Quite a few, quite a wide range, but worth bearing in mind that LSE isn't just an undergraduate institution. We are a graduate institution as well. And at the graduate level, we teach quite a number of additional courses. So all of the subjects I've highlighted in white on, uh, on this slide for you, those fields, those subjects are taught just at the graduate level. Sadly, you, you can't take those courses for credit, but you can attend any lecture you wish at the school. So you can attend both undergraduate and graduate lectures, but purely for your own personal pleasure. If you want to learn more about Europe, gender, international development, you can certainly do so by attending those graduate level courses. But it's the subject areas in black, which you will take for credit if you're studying abroad with us. We were founded in 1895, so we're not terribly old, but we're, we're fairly well established uh, now. Uh, founded by a group called the Fabians, uh, Fabian Society, is still around today. When we were founded, our, our original founders, those Fabians, wanted to create an institution for the betterment of society. Uh, they wanted to create people who would go out into the world and make it a better place. And that is still very much what we hope we are doing at the school all these years later. In 1900, we joined the University of London. So we've been a member of the federal, very large University of London for most of our existence. Uh, you, if you come to study at LSE, are automatically both an LSE student and a University of London student. So you have access to all of our facilities, but also all of the facilities of the University of London. I'll come on to that a little bit later, tell you more about that. On a day-to-day -day basis, you don't really notice the University of London. You're taught at LSE on our campus, following our curriculum with LSE students, LSE faculty, living in usually, usually LSE accommodation. So it's a very LSE existence, but you are part of the University of London. 
I mentioned the University of London as a very large federal organisation. It is. There are tens and tens and tens of thousands of students in the University of London. We are just a small part of that, really. 12,531, to be precise, students with us last year, 46% of whom uh, were undergraduates, which, as I say, is what you will be if you come to the school, and 54% were female. A more striking statistic, 67% last year, 67% of our students joined us from outside the UK, from overseas. They came from over 150 different countries. They speak over 100 different languages. It is a truly global, cosmopolitan, very diverse campus that you would be joining. Indeed, 40% of our staff come from outside the UK as well. So you will not stand out. If you come and study at LSE, uh, we won't be laughing and pointing at you in the street as the strange international students. Uh, we laugh and point at the British students instead. They are so unusual on our campus. No, we don't, of course. We like all of our students. But it is a place where you will find you settle in quickly. Everything we do is geared up for students coming from different backgrounds, perspectives, cultures. We have no international office because all of our students, to some extent, are unfamiliar with the teaching and with the culture on campus. The other important uh, factor to highlight is where we're located. Now, I really do hope that this doesn't come as a shock to anyone. Uh, we are located in London. It's given away to some extent by the name of the school, but we're not just in London, we're in the very heart of the city. If you look at this aerial view of central London, uh, the very large LSE logo glowing in the centre of this picture. The buildings underneath that logo uh, are the LSE campus. To the right, you can see the River Thames winding away into the distance, and those slightly taller buildings at the top of this picture, that's the City of London, Europe's financial heart. So LSE is absolutely smack bang in the centre of London, a very compact campus. You can walk across LSE's campus from front to back in about 90 seconds, maybe two minutes if you walk slowly. It's a very small site for 12,000 students. And we grow organically out of the world around us. We're not fenced, we're not gated. We are very much part of the city. So lively and vibrant and cosmopolitan, dynamic, noisy, ugly and dirty, uh, you could argue as well. Far less of the latter. Uh, we really have spent quite a lot of money making it a nice place over recent years. And of course, you've got all that London offers you around. Bear in mind, you won't be living on that central site. You live in central London, uh, within walking distance of the school, but we don't have housing on that central site. I will return to housing uh, later in the presentation. Now, a little bit about the general course. What is the general course? Well, the general course is the name that we gave to study abroad in 1909. So the general course has been operating for almost as long as the school has been in existence. Uh, it's Pretty established, we more or less know what we're doing nowadays. Full year only, we don't offer any semester long study abroad as LSE. Unusual, um, you're probably familiar with most other institutions offering a semester of study abroad. LSE does not do that for two quite simple reasons. One, many of our courses, about 50% of our undergraduate courses are year long. So you need to be with us the full year to take those courses. The other reason is a more philosophical one. We believe very strongly in the value of year-long study abroad, and we don't think you will get as much out of spending just 12, 10, 12 weeks in London as you will a full year. You can really make uh, good friends, explore uh, the city, the UK and Europe, and have a much more fulfilling academic experience as well. So we stick to that year quite doggedly, uh, despite most other places now offering us semester only. You know, the students uh, a year, join us on the general course from all over the world, 150 different institutions are sending students on the general course. Many of them, uh, it's fair to say, are US institutions. Uh, many of our students do come from US institutions, although having said that, they are often international students studying at a US institution. So they're already studying abroad, arguably. But we welcome students from all over the world. So it's quite a, a diverse community. And you're fully integrated into undergraduate study at the school. So if you join the general course, you're going to be sat in exactly the same lectures and exactly the same classes, discussion groups as regular degree-seeking LSE students. You'll be based in the same academic departments. You will use the same facilities. Uh, live in the same accommodation. Everything is the same. You are absolutely fully integrated into the school. You are an LSE student for the year that you're with us. 
The big difference, well, of course, you were only with us for a year, not for a full degree. But the big difference whilst you're studying with us is that you can choose your courses from across everything that we teach. Degree seeking students cannot do that. They're not allowed to do that, but you can. You have over 320 courses available to you, uh, this year at least, and offered at different levels. So introductory 100 level, uh, intermediate 200 level, or advanced 300 level, three different uh, levels of courses. You pick courses that reflect your interests, your academic background, your academic requirements. I'll come on to this a little bit later, but fundamentally the choice is yours. As long as you're qualified to take a course, we will allow you to do that. And we support you. The Dean of the uh, General Course, Dean for the General Course, a member of faculty staff who looks after you whilst you're with us, a very extensive and subsidized social calendar. You can stand for an elected office through the Students' Union uh, General Course representative position and represent your peers' views on that body. Internship opportunities offered uh, alongside a fantastic 10% discount of graduate study at the school once you've left the general course. And given how expensive we are, that's not a bad deal. In terms of study, I mentioned one year at the school, full academic year. You join us in September, you study through until May the following year. That's the academic year. We begin a little bit later than you do. Uh, we start in September, finish in May, late May, early June. Two 11 week teaching terms. Your first 11 week teaching term runs from September, late September up to mid December, Christmas time. This is our last week at the moment. We break tomorrow for, for Christmas. You come back after Christmas for another 11 week teaching term. That takes you up to Easter. You break for Easter and then you return for a final uh, term that's given over to assessment. Not a teaching term, that's given over to assessment. So two 11 week teaching terms, 22 weeks either side of Christmas. The courses you take, as I say, can be chosen from anywhere across the school. The length varies of these courses, uh, half units delivered in a single semester, single term, or full units uh, delivered across the full year. You have to take a minimum of four full unit courses or the equivalent in half unit courses. So four, five, six courses is quite normal for a general course student. You mix and match depending on what you're taking. However long the course is, whether it's a full year course or it is just a single term course, the teaching style is always the same, lectures and classes. In a lecture, one hour a week normally, uh, all the students on a particular course will be present, they'll all be listening, taking notes, the faculty will be talking at you, you simply listen, no interaction, you're not interacting with each other or the faculty. But classes, one hour of classes each week for each of your courses, classes are deliberately small. So if you're in a large lecture, there will only be 15 of you in a class, a discussion group. And that's quite deliberately the case because we want you to participate. You argue, you debate, you discuss the topic of that particular week. One student will have led off with a presentation. So you really do get involved. Classes are your main forum for learning, the crucible for your learning whilst you're at the school. Together, those one hour of classes, one hour of lectures per course each week mean you could have just eight contact teaching hours a week. It rises to probably no more than 15 hours a week. That's uh, extreme, maybe 10, 12 hours a week. But it's not uncommon to have just eight contact teaching hours a week. If you were to do only eight hours uh, of contact teaching a week and, and no further study, you would have a tremendous time with us. You would really enjoy your time at LSE, but I suspect you wouldn't do terribly well in your final exams. So it is essential. Before you come to LSE, if you're thinking about joining us on the general course, do first of all think about how you study. Are you an independent and self-motivated student? That's what we're looking for. Students who don't mind getting up and reading, writing and researching on a foggy December morning because they love the subject not because they're being told to by an academic. We're a little bit hands off in how we deliver the teaching. Uh, our style of undergraduate teaching is more akin to graduate style teaching in the US. Uh, it is a little bit more uh, independent. So think about that beforehand, but rest assured, we won't just leave you to sink or swim. We do look after you. Many of my colleagues only have jobs at LSE because you have problems. If none of you have any problems, my poor colleagues are unemployed. We have to put them out on the street with nothing to do, and that's very sad. So important that if you come to the school, you are unhappy, and that you share your misery with my colleagues to give them a reason to get up in the morning and come onto campus, and they will help you go off and enjoy the rest of your time with us. 
we have a, a one-stop shop, LSE Life, as opposed to the far less popular LSE Death. LSE Life is a wonderful one-stop shop for all manner of support whilst you're at the school. But it's not on its own. Uh, we have a disability and wellbeing service, a faith centre, student counselling service, students' union advice service, and a student wellbeing service as well. No sh shortage of support. You simply seek it out rather than us coming to you. We're not holding your hand. You come and seek that support and we will help you. A quick aside, um, our library is worth mentioning. LSE's library is the British Library of Political and Economic Science, a huge resource. It's both a, a national UK and Commonwealth uh, collection of material, over 4 million printed volumes. Housed in a building which we've made look a little bit like a prison in this picture, which is unfortunate. It's much nicer, much, much nicer than that, I can assure you. But if for some reason you don't want to spend time in our library or you can't find what you were, uh, what you were looking for in our library, remember, you are a University of London student as well. So you can access University College London, uh, King's College London, Queen Mary, SOAS. You can go into any of their facilities, use their libraries in addition to LSEs. There is no excuse for not doing your um, reading while you're studying at the school. Huge amount of material available to you. And good news on the accommodation front, we guarantee you housing. Uh, you don't have to take it, we don't compel you to live in university housing. If you would prefer a box under a bridge or a sleeping bag in a doorway, that is entirely at your discretion. Uh, I wouldn't stop you, but I, I would try to dissuade you from that. Have a look at university housing, guaranteed as long as you apply by the deadline, which is the end of May each year, uh, your year of entry. Not located on that uh, central site that I showed you on the map earlier. But as I suggested, all within walking distance. So maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe 30 minutes walk from the school or you get the bus, you use the tube system. So dotted all over central London, you're going to become a Londoner. You join the general course, you really are going to be living in the, in the community, shopping and socialising with London local people and walking, getting the bus or the tube to the school. Not only the locations are different, but also the types of accommodation, the facilities that they offer and the prices that we charge. So really important. If we offer you a place on the program, go onto the website, have a look at the virtual tours that have been shot for each of these residences. Very cleverly filmed to make the rooms look far larger than they actually are. But do have a look at those. They give you a nice flavour, good taste of, of what's available. Book your room before May the 31st and you're guaranteed accommodation. And just in case you didn't think you could enjoy yourself whilst you're at LSE, it is possible if you try very, very hard, you, you might enjoy your time with us. The principal means, uh, perhaps, of doing this, the general course social calendar. Loads of activities where we've reduced the price, subsidised them just for you as general course students. So we have a welcome party uh, on a boat down the Thames at the start of the year. We take you away for a residential weekend at Cumberland Lodge in Windsor Great Park. Uh, very near Windsor Castle, where the, the Queen stays. Thanksgiving dinner, a summer ball at the end of the year, and, and lots of other, other events throughout the academic year. And on top of all of that, you've got everything else that LSE offers. Public lectures, very, really impressive public lecture series. Lots of very eminent individuals from different walks of life come to the school and speak to students, staff, the public, almost every night of the week. That's really worth engaging with if you're studying with us. In addition to that, lots of clubs and societies. The Students' Union has over 200 different clubs and societies for you to join. If you are interested in something academic or something a little bit more cultural or maybe more esoteric, get involved. And if you can't find a club or society that reflects your interests, set one up. Get other students with the same weird interests as you to join you in that new club or society. If you like sports, uh, and it's fair to say that LSE's reputation is not founded on sporting prowess, but if you do like sports, bear in mind that we own 23 acres of playing fields. You can see on the picture here, on the slide, those are well, certainly some of our playing fields, and that's our clubhouse in the background. I should clarify, just in case there's any doubt, we don't own 23 acres of central London. Uh, if we did own 23 acres of central London, we would be a delightfully and staggeringly rich institution, but we're not afraid. So you do have to get a bus or a train to reach these playing fields in South London. Weekends, Wednesday afternoons, given over to sports and social activities, and all complemented by, again, the University of London, London, which provides its own support and social activities as well. On top of that, 
four weeks of vacation at Christmas, four weeks of vacation at Easter. So you have eight weeks of holiday built into the academic year. This is entirely yours to do with whatever you wish. You are not required to be on campus during the vacation periods. You can go home and see friends and family perhaps at Christmas, uh, at Easter. Why not travel? Explore the UK, go off into to Europe and go around visiting different capital cities. Entirely up to you. Perhaps one of the greatest advantages of a year of study abroad are these breaks and the opportunity you have to really immerse yourself in the culture of your, your new host country. And one final point on this slide, something to, to reassure your loved ones about. There is a medical centre at LSE. Now, of course, we hope you don't get ill. Heaven forfends that you fall ill. But if you do, doctors and nurses on LSE's campus will look after you. The British taxpayer will care for you free of charge uh, through the terrible National Health Service. So you need not suffer in silence. Now, yeah, that was a, a whirlwind introduction to LSE, very much LSE in a nutshell. So that's what we offer you. Let's move on to look at what you need to offer us. Let's look at uh, the entry requirements for our students. And the first thing to emphasize is of course, do please comply with all the requirements of your home institution. Uh, they will no doubt have their own timetable and, and uh, requirements that you have to fulfill. Make sure you comply with those. There is no restriction from LSE's perspective on the number of applications that we will consider uh, from UWM or indeed the offers we will make. So no restriction whatsoever, but we do require you to comply with anything that your home institution expects of you. In terms of our LSE's entry requirements, if you wish to apply for qualitative essay-based subjects, we are looking for you to have a GPA of at least 3.3 out of 4 after three semesters of study. So you'll be applying uh, in the second semester of your sophomore year. You have to have three semesters of grades when you apply. If you would like to come to LSE to take mainly quantitative courses, and by that I mean uh, economics, finance, mathematics, statistics, those more quantitative courses, we look for a slightly higher GPA, 3.5 out of four, again, after three semesters. We look very pragmatically at your transcript, when you submit your transcript, we will look at the subjects you've taken and their relevance to what you would like to study at LSE and the grades, of course, that you've obtained in those courses. So we do look at it pragmatically, but broadly speaking, those are the GPAs we're looking for. By the time you come to LSE, you will have completed two years of study. We look at two academic references as well. Uh, these must be academic, not personal, not professional. We're looking for academic references from teachers who have well, preferably teachers who have taught you in subjects relevant to what you would like to study at LSE. This isn't a must. This isn't an absolute requirement. Uh, if you can't get a reference from a, a relevant teacher, that's fine, as long as they're familiar with your academic work. The only references we tend not to find helpful are references from language teachers. They tend not to be as useful in the LSE context, but any other two academic references, absolutely fine. Sensible course choices. Remember what I was telling you about 100, 200 and 300 level courses, 300 level courses at LSE, third year courses, those are the same as senior year courses at US institutions. They're very advanced. They usually require students to have a lot of prior knowledge of the subject. So we encourage you not to take more than one 300 level course. You can take three 200 level courses or maybe one 100 level, two 200 level and one 300 level. Combination is ultimately up to you, but don't overstretch yourselves. Be sensible in the courses you choose. And then alongside all of that, a statement of academic purpose. Just 900 words, not very much. We're going to ask you three questions. First of all, we want to know about your, your academic journey to reach uh, where you are now and indeed, hopefully, LSE uh, in the future. Tell us about why you've chosen to apply to the general course and what you hope to gain from it. And then tell us a bit about the courses you'd like to study at the school. Why are you interested in them? You'll see from that, it's quite self-evident that we're very interested in your academic motivation. So this statement of academic purpose is just that. It's not a more prosaic uh, personal statement talking about your likes and dislikes, hobbies and interests. We're really very interested in your academic focus. So that's what we're looking for in that statement of academic purpose. Just 900 words, 300 for each of the three questions. And then if you've got all of that 
You've done all of that, submit your application. You can apply free of charge from the 1st of January, that's LSE's opening date for applications, up until the 31st of July next year. That's when we close uh, applications. So you've got a good seven months there to apply. Decisions, uh, once we've downloaded your completed application, are usually issued within seven working days. So it's a very swift turnaround. Before you have time to change your mind, you will have a decision from us. Spend a moment on costs and financial aid. Uh, in terms of tuition fee, no change. You continue to pay your UWM tuition fee as usual. So you're not paying anything direct to LSE in terms of tuition fees. But living expenses, of course, you will have those. And we estimate them at about £1,300 per month, approximately $1,700 per month. Not per year, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? But no, per month, $1,700. It is possible. If you try hard, it is possible to live on more than that uh, each month. If you go out uh, clubbing every night, if you're jetting off to Cannes, Nice and Rome every weekend, then you'll very quickly spend more. But budget carefully, and that's quite a reasonable amount to live on. More positively, financial aid is available. Um, if you're offered a place to study on the general course, we will then, at that point, invite you to apply for a John C. Phelan general course scholarship, need-based not merit-based, so these are need-based scholarships. And if you're successful in obtaining one of those, we will also consider you for an International Students' House residential scholarship. And that would provide you with free housing, bed and breakfast for the full academic year. On top of that, there are other scholarships. Butex, for instance, uh, do speak to your home institution and have a look at our website for any uh, further scholarships that you might be eligible to apply for. And you can work once you're in the UK. If you don't have a British passport, you will need a visa to come into the country, which isn't difficult to obtain, a little bit uh, administratively tedious perhaps, but it's not difficult to get. It will allow you to work up to and including 20 hours a week on or off campus during term time, and you can work full time in those vacation periods. So if you're interested in some anthropological study, you could work and learn more about British people in the workplace and get a little bit of pocket money as well whilst you're with us. LSE Careers can help you, uh, just like all of our facilities at LSE. LSE Careers are there for you as much as any other student. So do make full use of that. Indeed, they run bespoke events just for general course students. So use LSE Careers. Uh, for part-time term time jobs, vacation jobs, internships at the end of your time on the general course, and even beyond that, uh, graduate jobs. Once you've graduated from UWM, you can still use LSE's career service in the future. And one final slide. You become an alumnus of the programme, as I suggested earlier. You become a, an LSE alumnus for the rest of your life, whether you like it or not. Uh, you will get a whole host of benefits. <laughs> Use our uh, alumni centre in central London. You get an LSE email address, access to the career service, as I mentioned, but also the library. And we'll bug you incessantly with telephone calls asking for cash until you give us enough to name something after you at the school. But more importantly, the year will fly by. You come and study with us for one year. It really does go, go by just far too quickly. But that one year is then a lifelong connection with the school. The moment that year finishes, that's not the end of your relationship with LSE. You have that lifelong connection. And consequently, it is a lifelong benefit that you're going to accrue from joining us on the general course. Now, for further information, please, uh, as I encouraged you to do earlier, have a look at the website. You'll find full details of the programme and our courses on the website. You can also see the, the most current edition of the LSE general course brochure on the website, the PDF version of that as well. So explore the website. And if you have any questions after today, and we'll take some questions in a moment, but if you'd like to contact us after today, use our live chat facility Monday to Friday each week. We answer questions in real time through live chat. You can email us at gc at lse.ac.uk or you can simply register your interest on our website and we'll keep you up to date with the latest news from Houghton Street and from the school. But at that point, I'm going to pause. Uh, I've been speaking at you quite long enough. I'm very happy now to answer any questions uh, that you might have. So let me stop sharing the screen and see, does anyone have any questions? Anything at all I can assist with now? You're going to make my life very simple. And 
for, I should also say, Jesse, you're here um, as well from um, the study abroad office there. Was there anything that you wish I had said or indeed that you wish I hadn't said uh, that you would like to clarify now? Anything from your perspective that the students might be interested in? No, I loved everything you said, Will, of course. Um, I guess one thing I could clarify for the group here is that our application um, will likely be, our due date will likely be early March. Um, I know your deadline is a little bit later than that, but that is our deadline. And I do believe this will be updated on our program page, but I do believe we're going to begin doing rolling admissions um, just to kind of get those acceptances out. So if you have any questions about the application deadline or the application process, um, you can always contact our office. Um, yeah, and we have a good number of students um, that are currently studying at LSE. Um, I would have to look, but I think around 10 or so. So we do typically get a good number of UW students. Um, and eventually once they've returned, um, they'll typically volunteer to kind of join our return student list. And often that's really helpful, you know, as prospective students are having questions or just wonder about kind of day-to-day -day life or classes those students will be good resources just because that experience will be fresh in their minds. Absolutely. Dare I ask if you've heard from any of your students currently studying with us? Are they in touch with you? You know, I have heard from them. Um, surpri maybe surprisingly, they, they don't, you know, keep regular contact with me. Um, but I do know when they first arrived, you know, they were settling in. I Zoomed with a couple of them. Um, and I think it does, you know, just study abroad in general takes some adjustment time. Um, but I think, you know, no news is good news on this end. I haven't heard from students in a while, so I think they're doing pretty well. <laughs> yes, I, I always take that approach as well. If we don't hear from them, they're generally fine. But, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so does anyone, is there anything, if you would, do you have a question, either type it in the chat or you can um, speak, put your microphone on. It's entirely up to you. If there's anything I can assist with, or indeed Jessica can assist with whilst we're here. Here we go, there's a question. I applied to the GC and was accepted last year, hurrah, uh, but declined because of COVID concerns, fair enough. Are there any restrictions on reusing parts of my application when I reapply this year? Assuming they were true and accurate when you first wrote them, absolutely not, no, please feel free to reuse them, but naturally, uh, given the intervening period, update that application as well. Talk a little bit about what you've been doing in the meantime and update the academic aspects in particular. But from our perspective, we're not going to run a plagiarism test on it. We're not going to see if you're just copying what you did before. That's fine. Don't reinvent the wheel in this respect. Hope that helps. Anything else? No. Well, if there isn't anything else, I'm not here to detain you longer than I need to. So uh, if there are no more questions, I, I will share this recording with Jessa. Jessa, you're more than welcome to make the recording, a link to the recording available to everyone here and indeed anyone else. So you can relive these happy moments in the future. Uh, but if you have questions after today that you suddenly remember, just drop us a line. You can email us, get in touch with live chat, as I said, always happy to help. And we'll see, I trust all of you in London uh, at some point in the future, hopefully next year. But if there are no more questions now, you're welcome to, to, to go. Oh, you've got enough. You see, do this every time. Do you know if year-long courses would translate to two semester courses worth of credits at UW? I was waiting for this question. Jess, this is one for you. Yes, this is a great question. I'm glad you asked. So yes, typically for a year-long course, we are breaking that course into two separate equivalents. Um, so I, I feel like I always provide terrible examples, but if you were taking a year long econ course, um, it's likely that the first half of the course would be something like econ 101. And then the second half of the course would then post as, you know, more advanced credit, just focusing on the content of the latter half, maybe econ 102. Um, each LSE year long course is worth a total of eight Madison credits. And so you would receive a four credit UW equivalent for the first half, um, which would post to your fall transcript. And then uh, another four credit UW course for the second half. Um, so that's how we, we break it down. Uh, you can review, if you look at the course equivalent list on our program page, you will be able to tell, you know, many courses show up twice 
um, and have separate equivalents. So it will maybe make more sense when you look at that list now, knowing that it's um, sort of broken out into two separate equivalents. And you will receive UW-Madison grades for the courses at LSE, which is typically a good thing. I think we do see most students who study abroad doing just as well um, GPA-wise as they do at UW-Madison, sometimes better. So we hope that it will even just increase your overall GPA. Um, but that is something to, to keep in mind. Um, not all US institutions work similarly in that way. So it could be that you have a friend from the University of Michigan or Minnesota or something that is attending LSE and all of their classes are pass fail. Um, that's not the case at UW, but again, I think that that's more of a positive thing. You stay continuously enrolled. It posts to your UW transcript. Um, everything works very smoothly for the most part with that. So you, you're not necessarily going to fail and lose credit. That's the important thing. <laughs> no, it should no. still be okay. Uh, so I am wondering if the GC is opened mid-December or January the 1st. That's a very specific question. Well, we, we have what we term um, a soft launch prior to Christmas. So we don't really advertise this, but I'll let you into a secret. Um, I anticipate the application form actually being available from around the, the 20th of December. We, we advertise the 1st of January, but if you're at a short end over Christmas, you know, loose end, you don't know what to do over the Christmas break, why not fill in a general course application? Yeah, that's good to know. Will all given faster financial aid transfer, one for again for you, Jess, I think? Yes, always, also a great question. Um, so we always encourage students to, you know, check with the financial aid uh, office directly, but generally, yes, since you're still continuing at UW-Madison, you're still a fully enrolled UW student. Typically your financial aid and your scholarships can all be applied to LSE. Um, and sometimes it is adjusted as far as, I guess, your financial aid goes because they will use the, um, the cost of the program to calculate your aid. So depending on how the cost of the program compares to your cost on campus, sometimes you might qualify for more aid if it's more expensive to study abroad. Um, but yes, generally, again, since you're still fully enrolled at UW, it's not like you're taking any time off. Um, you would, you know, still qualify for financial aid. Um, and then on the scholarship side, if you're currently receiving scholarships, generally, you know, those would continue to be applied to your program. There are also specific study abroad scholarships that you can apply through our office to qualify for. Those are sponsored by UW and by our office. Um, but then, of course, there's other national scholarships, maybe specific LSE scholarships, different things that you could be looking at um, to qualify for. So if you're thinking about the 2022-2023 school year at um, LSE, now would be a good time to start just exploring the scholarship options. Um, many of them may not be open. Typically our deadlines for scholarships are around the same time as the study abroad applications are due, which is typically sometime in the spring semester. Um, but I would say that, you know, a lot of times students ask about scholarships, but once the application deadline rolls around, you know, it, it might be something where they don't have time to fill it out or, you know, they have the best of intentions, but um, really they're, they're going to prioritize the LSE application above scholarships. So since you're all kind of tuning in today, that would be something that you could just start to take a look at. And I always encourage students to, um, as you said, well, like not reinvent the wheel. You might if there's a scholarship that requires an essay, you might rework your essay for the application or, you know, just try to almost use it like a cover letter where you're not just um, starting fresh for every single single scholarship. So um, we do have scholarship information on our program page and on our website. And definitely if you have questions, you can always contact me. Very good advice. Thank you. That's good. Anything else? No. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Great questions, though. Great questions. Okay. Well, thank you all so much indeed. Good luck. Enjoy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And uh, I'll see you all very soon, I hope. Thanks for coming along today. Thanks, everyone.